nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. We have several proclamations this morning, the first being Purple Up for Military Kids, April 2023. I'd like to call up Erica Hernandez, Elmer C. Jertberg American Legion Auxiliary Unit, 299 Secretary and Junior Auxiliary, Auxiliary Program Chairman, along with Erica's daughters, Rebecca Avila Hernandez and Samara Hernandez. Welcome. And we have a proclamation, and it reads, Hi, cutie. How are you? Ooh, we're shy. <laughs> Whereas emergency medical services are vital public service, and the members of the emergency medical services team are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness and injury. Is this the right proclamation? It isn't. You know? Military child, this is it. Sorry about that. I'm reading along thinking this is wrong. Okay, we're going to start over again. Whereas each year our nation designates April as the month of military child to recognize and thank children of military families that are directly impacted by the deployment of one or sometimes both parents on full-time duty status in military service, including members of the National Guard and reserves on active duty orders. Citizens of Chino appreciate the sacrifices made of our servicemen and women who defend our country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And children of military families face unique challenges, and we appreciate their strength and sacrifice as they support their enlisted family members, at times during long periods of separation. And whereas we acknowledge the role we play in supporting children of military families to help them be successful in life, educational pursuits, and community involvement while their parent is deployed... Former Defense Secretary Casper Weinberger established the month of April as the Military Child Month in 1986 to recognize military children for their commitment, sacrifice, strength, and unconditional support of our troops, and to remind us of the opportunity to provide support and encouragement. So whereas April is Purple Up for Military Kids Month in Chino, California, and all Chinoans are encouraged to wear purple, the color symbolizing all branches of the military, as a visible icon of support and appreciations for military children. Purple is a color that symbolizes all branches of the military, and as it is a combination of Army Green, Navy Blue, Military Red, Air Force Blue, and Coast Guard, Coast Guard Blue. So now, therefore, I, Eunice Emiloa, Mayor of the City of Chino, do hereby proclaim April 2023 as Purple Up for Military Kids and April 15th, 2023 as Purple Up Day in the city of Chino and ask all soldiers and staff to show support for the military children of military families by recognizing their sacrifices, resilience, and courage. And to the parents who serve to protect our freedoms, wear purple in April 2023. I'd like to present that to you. Wow, what a blessing it is to be here. So thank you for this opportunity. So I'd like to start by saying thank you to the beautiful city of Chino, the mayor, and the city uh, council members, staff, and the community for this opportunity to be here. May God bless you guys abundantly, always and forever. Annually in April, the Department of Defense celebrates military children. There are more than 1.6 military, there are 1.6 million military children, according to the DOD. They often face challenges and unique experiences because of their parents' service. On average, military families move every two to three years, which impacts military children through changing schools and friends. In the spirit of service, not self, the mission of the American Legion Auxiliary is to support and honor the sacrifices of those we serve, who serve, and enhancing the lives of our veterans, military, and their families, both at home and abroad. For God and country, we advocate for veterans, educate our citizens, mentor youth, and promote patriotism, good citizenship, peace, and security. Purple Up Day is part of the, the month-long celebration. Purple symbolizes a combination of the colors of each branch of the U.S. military, Army Green, Navy Blue, 
Air Force Blue, Marine Red, and Coast Guard Blue. At this time, if I could have the service members and veterans or children of service members who are in this room, if you could please stand. Thank you so much for your service and your sacrifices, both known and unknown. Thank you very much. To, um, and thank you so much for this opportunity again. Thank you guys so much. God bless you. You know, we have a beautiful courtyard that honors our veterans. Um, and we have a couple of ceremonies every year that honor the people in the military, those currently and those in the past. So thank you so much for being here. And thank you for all that you do and all your families do to support those that are in the service as well. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Oops. Always forget to get you. Being little. <laughs> okay, now I'd like to call up Deputy Fire Chief Jeremy Alt to accept two proclamations this evening. The first is Emergency Medical Services Week, May 21st to 27th. You got the right one this time, Jeremy. That was a professional pivot. Uh, Yeah, right. (laughs) Whereas emergency medical services are a vital public service, and the members of the emergency medical services team are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury, and trauma has been identified as the leading cause of death among persons 1 through 44 years of age. And whereas raising our community awareness of the threat that trauma poses can increase our readiness, emergency medical services teams consist of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others. The members of emergency medical services teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specializing training, specialized training, and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. Americans benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals. And whereas it's appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical services providers by designating Trauma Awareness Month and Emergency Medical Services Week. And now, therefore, I, Eunice Emilio, a mayor of the city of Chino, proclaim the month of May as Trauma Awareness Month and the week of May 21st to the 27th, 2023, as Emergency Medical Services Week. Jeremy? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. On, uh, it's actually, uh, I'm very blessed and honored. On behalf of our board directors, uh, Chief Williams, and all the members of our fire department, uh, your fire department, to accept this proclamation. In fact, I want to speak for just a moment on the others we mentioned in this. Um, I'm sure many of you heard that uh, we are blessed in this community that some of our survival rates for those that suffer sudden cardiac arrest, um, they're very high. In fact, they double the national average. Well, we couldn't do that without members of the community that engage as those others. That member of the team for emergency services that engages, steps forward to help their neighbor, Uh, I just want to actually call them out and thank them very much for engaging with that and encourage others to be part of that chain of survival to help us deliver that level of care. So thank you. Well, we're very blessed to have you in our, as our fire service. And then we have one more. Uh, This is for Wildfire Awareness Month. And whereas in 2022, wildfires in the state of California devastated approximately 362,455 acres, which destroyed 876 structures and claimed the lives of nine individuals. The combined impacts of drought and extreme weather conditions caused by Santa Ana winds creates dangerous wildfire conditions that can threaten lives and property, as well as endanger our delicate ecosystem. And whereas the key to understanding the dangers of wildfire is through education and awareness, and as such, an informed and prepared community can take actions to prevent fires from starting. Whereas Wildfire Awareness Month will promote the awareness and education of necessary actions to prevent wildfires and the loss of life, property, and environmental damage associated therewith. And whereas the Chino Valley Fire District, along with local government agencies and the Carbon Canyon Fire Safe Council, 
are prepared to assist our citizens by making our communities safer from the hazards of wildfire through educational programs such as Ready, Set, Go, and through the Fuel Reduction Program, which provides a brush drop-off and green waste dumpster to Carbon Canyon residents. Now, therefore, I, Eunice Emilua, Mayor of the City of Chino, proclaim the month of May as Wildfire Awareness Month, and we're preventing, presenting this to you the 18th day of April. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, again, on behalf of our entire department, we appreciate the recognition. I know we mentioned Carbon Canyon, but we serve a large area with our district, especially in the city of Chino. We want to remind our residents again that partnership we have with the community. And we just want to encourage uh, folks even within our city here that there is a role for you to play in managing wildfire spread. So if you have a large piece of property or property that has vegetation, we would ask you to be proactive and make sure that vegetation is trimmed back, especially if you live in like the new areas of the city down in the preserve, those types of areas. Uh, we want to partner with you to make sure that your home is safe and that uh, you have uh, an opportunity to help engage in preventing wildfires. So thank you so much for the recognition. Well, Jeremy, also, um, I know sometimes we live next to a piece of property that has not been maintained appropriately and has overgrown weeds that could become dangerous. What does someone do when they notice that there's property next to them that has not been cared for? Well, I appreciate that question. Actually, you know, we believe in relationships with our neighbors, which is a good thing. Uh, so it all starts there. But um, we're here to help. Uh, as long, along with uh, code enforcement from the city, we have uh, fire prevention officers or community risk reduction officers at the fire district that can be a resource to anyone who wants to call. We can come out, look at the problem with you, and talk through solutions. We have a very robust weed abatement program uh, throughout our entire community that we partner with the city in that. So we have options. We're here to help, and we can help guide, and even if we need to mitigate some of those situations. I'd also like to mention that the Chino Valley Fire District also serves the unincorporated sphere area. And I know some of those areas sometimes get out of control with weeds. So please contact the fire department if you notice that there's a property that needs to be maintained that could possibly cause a problem. Yeah, and even though those are in the county area, even though those areas may be in a county pocket, they're still part of the fire district. So we're here to help you. Thank, Thank you, you so Jeremy. Much. Thank you. We, uh, prior to the council meeting starting, we did have a closed session. I'd like to call on our attorney, Fred Galante, to report out of that meeting. Uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, members of the council. The city council has not uh, completed its discussion of the closed session item that was previously announced, so it would be appropriate to withhold the report following the completion of that closed session, which will follow your open session. Okay, so we will be going back into closed session after the council meeting. Okay, thank you. City Manager, are there any agenda revisions or additions? No changes, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, you'll note in the packet under information, we have the Economic Development Report for April 2023. We have monthly agency reports and our legislative update tracking pieces of applicable legislation. Next, under public announcements, the Corn Feed Run Show and Cruise. First, please make sure you come out to the 21st Chino Kiwanis Corn Feed Run and Car Show and Cruise happening this Saturday, April 22nd, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. right here at the Chino Civic Center. This is an outstanding event of car enthusiasts and families alike with great food vendors and, of course, classic cars and tractors and engines and motorcycles. So make sure to come out. Uh, and enjoy uh, the pre-1976 classy car, motorcycles, and working show trucks. 
uh, a 15 block cruise from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., an open header contest from 1 to 2 p.m. For more information on the event, please visit Chino Kiwanis website at www.chinokiwanis.com. Additionally, I'd like to provide one last reminder that the Chino, City of Chino, in partnership with the Inland Empire Utilities Agency, will be holding a free Community Earth Day event on Thursday, April 20th from 4 to 7 p.m., located at the Chino Creek Wetlands and Educational Park at 6075 Kimball Avenue. All participants will be able to enjoy a tour of the park along with educational activities, environmental exhibits, animal en encounters, community performances, giveaways, and more. For more information, please contact 909-334-3282. And lastly, please note that starting on May 2nd, the Chino City Council regular meetings will now begin at 6 p.m. instead of the previous time of 7 p.m. Please note that if a closed session is needed, it will not be scheduled before 4 p.m. prior to the regular meeting starting at 6 p.m. Additionally, the Planning Commission and Community Services Commission will also be adjusting their meeting times. The Planning Commission regular meetings will now be held on the third Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. starting in May. Similarly, starting in May, the Community Services Commission's meeting will be held on the fourth Monday of every month at 6 p.m. For more information on scheduled meetings, please contact our city clerk at 909-334-3306 or visit cityofchino.org forward slash agendas. Next item on the agenda is public comments. This is the time and the place for the audience to address the council on items that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. Uh, due to council policy and Brown Act requirements, if you choose to speak and bring up an issue, we cannot take item, action on the items, but we can refer follow-up to our staff. We have this evening, Ayman Talbot, I always mispronounce your name, uh, Taleb, Talab, Taleb, I'll, you're going to have to pronounce this for me. From the Chino Valley Islamic Center, he's going to provide us with an invocation. I enjoy. I invite all of you who wish to join us to please stand. Now, please state your name for me. Thank you so much, um, dear mayor. My name is Talib Al Safi. I'm the Imam at the Chino Valley Islamic Center here, just a block away from the center. Thank you. So I start by uh, the name of God, the most merciful, the most gracious. Um, I come to you all on behalf of the Chino Valley Islamic Center community uh, with the message of peace and message of complete submission to God and the message of Islam. I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. We begin our invocation by praising and thanking you, our Lord. We beseech you for the blessings that you have been bestowing upon us in public and secret during days and nights. O oh God, we ask you to grant us this gathering wisdom, knowledge, sincerity in our intentions, efforts, and services that we put forth. O oh God, allow us to service the people of, of our city in a way that is beneficial to them and that is pleasing to you. O oh God, we come together from different backgrounds, cultures, and practices of faith. O oh God, we pray to you that you unite us in benefiting the mankind around us and to make us reasons of prosperity and growth for ourselves, our families, and communities around us and the nation. O oh God, bless those who work days and nights in sacrificing their lives and times to service the people, to ensure the safety, security, health, peace, harmony, and love. O oh God, bless them all and bless us all with your countless bounties. Thank you so much. And I just want to mention that I have to excuse myself to leave right now because we're breaking our fast. This is the 27th day of Ramadan, uh, as you may have heard. So I have to join my community. But thank you for the invitation. Thanks well, thank so much. Thank you very much for being here All right, this thank evening. You. <clears throat> OK, the next written request to speak is Melissa Campani from Supervisor Hagman's office. Well, good evening, Mayor, Council, staff, and of course, 
our community members. My name is Melissa Campani, and I'm here representing your county supervisor, Kurt Hagman. Supervisor Hagman uh, did ask me to come to share some information that, uh, that the county, a new program they're starting through the Animal Care Program. Volunteers are needed. Um, this is a, like I said, it's a new opportunity. However, the distance might be a little bit far. The uh, main shelter, I believe, is out in the DeVore area. We all know that we have friends and family um, that perhaps live a little closer to that direction, or, or I know people who would be committed to make that drive in order to help our fur friends. And so, really, we're just asking uh, if we can share the information. The, so the start of the program is happening. There is an application process. You need to be a San Bernardino County resident, 18 or older. And they're looking for, I believe it's nine hours a week, a month of volunteer time. And uh, this is gonna be a wonderful program because the uh, volunteers are going to start, um, it's gonna be a hands-on role. So they're gonna be in the shelters, creating a safe, clean, and loving environment for the animals and participating in the programs to help with adoptions uh, and other animal care needs. So we thank you very much. Let me give you the website. It is, uh, if you want more information, look up animalcare.sbcounty.gov slash volunteer. We hope to see a few Chino volunteers there. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. Next written request to speak is Sonia Shaw from Chino Valley Unified School District. Good evening, everyone. Thank you um, for having me today. I just wanted to um, invite you to a couple of things and also thank our councilman, um, Curtis Burton, for attending our meetings and just partnering with us. It, it goes a long way, and I've had a lot of people in the community talk about how they like the presence of you guys there. Um, and and it just, it, it's a really good thing, so I'm glad that we're in partnership with that. And um, Councilman Flores, thank you for also attending. I've seen your face in our meetings um, plenty of times, and, and People notice, and we, we are appreciative of that. Um, Councilman Lucio, I want to thank you for reaching out to me in regards to our, our wrestlers. It's, it's an important um, thing for our, our district, and just bringing it to our attention and working together. I'm hoping we can come up with some great things for our wrestlers for the future, and thank you for taking the time out and doing that and partnering with me as well. Um, I also want to um, Thank our community service department, your guys' community service department, our, our city's community service department. Um, John and I were invited to meet with Myra, Ted, and June um, this morning, and they're a wonderful group. Um, I'm excited to, I mean, they went through everything on telling us what they partnership with our district and just partnering with them in the future to make sure that our community is served and we're working together is, is a good thing. And it, and it was awesome that they took the time out of their busy schedules as well to meet with us and go through that. And we really appreciate that. That goes a long way. Um, I have some events I want to invite you guys to. We have some festivals coming up. Unfortunately, I'll be having to miss three of them, which I'm really bummed about, but hopefully our community can show up to those. We have an orchestra festival at Woodcrest Junior High on April 24th at 6 p.m. We have a district indoor um, showcase for Color Guard on April 25th, 7 p.m. at Chino Hills High. Um, on April 26th, we have our drum line um, at Chino High School. Um, and and on, in May, May 17th, we have a band showcase at Ayala. We have, on May 3rd, a Chino Hills band showcase. Um, on May 8th, we have Don Lugo. Um, band showcase, and on May 10th, we have our Chino High School Band Showcase. We also would like to invite you guys to our military salute on um, to honor our, our students that are enlisting or receiving an appointment into the military on May 18th. It's going to be at 6 p.m. at Woodcrest Junior High School. That's in Ontario. We would love to see you guys there. It's an awesome event. I attended as a parent last um, year, and it's just a great event, and it's a great way to honor those in the military um, and that are going to be going in the military because we, we definitely appreciate them doing that. Um, Mayor Uloa, I love your emergency medical um, awareness uh, service awareness week. I do have to say, the last meeting I was in, my phone was blowing up. My father, um, he suffers from chronic illness and a, and a heart failure. And just knowing that Chino had him 
um, was comforting and it didn't, it allowed me to stay during the meeting, but I, I knew he was in good hands. Our fire department was amazing um, and I knew that he was taken care of. They got him after him denying service, then they got him there when he passed out in the middle of the street and just seeing the messages, but knowing that Chino had him in their hands, our fire department, our hospital, our responders, everybody, I'm very appreciative as a resident because they've constantly, I don't want to say constantly been at my house, but um, I've had to use their services and it's always very comforting as a daughter of somebody who suffers from heart failure that he's in good hands. So I appreciate that. And that's an amazing thing um, to do and hopefully more people will be aware of, of the great things that they do for our community. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you Thank for you having so me. Much. And I, I'm hopeful to work um, on other things in the future future with you guys now details on all of these events because you rattled off a whole bunch sorry are they on your on our website, website um i can get it for you guys if you see me after the meeting but it is on our chino valley unified school district website okay great mm -hmm. thank you very much You're okay next written request to speak is trang uh hun when okay from garden grove Yes, thank you, Mayor and City Council Member. Um, this evening, it took me about an hour and a half to get here from Garden Grove, Orange County. So um, I like to be here, and I like to express my gratitude, appreciation, and big thanks to your police department. Uh, this is with the story. March 15 night, I was uh, in my restaurant in Garden Grove, and Somebody smashed two windows of my car uh, and took away my uh, uh, briefcases with my laptop and my passport, three checkbooks and a few other things in the, uh, in the briefcase, and also my uh, backpack. And um, so it was a really bad thing, and I was very surprised about it. And the next morning, I was at the bank for a meeting to close my account and did some other things. And about 9 o'clock that morning uh, on March 16, um, when I was in a meeting with the bank, my cell phone buzzed like four times. And I looked at it, and the area code went 909. And I didn't know what is there. So I step outside, and I call back. And uh, the, the lady on the other line said that this is Chino Police Department. <coughs> And then I say, oh, I'm in big trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> what else happened to me? So then I said, What's, what happens? And so she told me that um, the police department and she herself filed my briefcase and my book bags, my backpacks and everything. Um, and she asked if I would like to come and you know, pick them up. And I was really surprised that less than 24 hours and somewhere 45 minutes away, or 45 miles away, there's my, uh, my briefcase and everything will recover. So, of course, I drove out here to the, your police department and I met her and her name is, her first name is uh, with a pre pre abbreviation Y and Heidelberg is the last name. So she was there and waiting for me, and I looked through all, I looked over all my stuff, and everything was there, intact. Oh my gosh. And, um, and then not, not only that, uh, she told me that um, there was some other backpack from uh, a medical doctor in Garden Grove that I saw his ID on the pack were there too that she uh, recovered. And so I asked her, uh, how did you get this, and how did you know my cell phone number? So. Uh, what happened that night, the night before, we, after I lost it, I called Garden Grove PD, and the officer came and took down the report, got my name, my phone number, everything, and then I guess they put it in the system. So the next morning, when Officer Heidelberg um, filed my stuff from, from this apartment complex, like about two or three miles away from here, and apparently that morning, the apartment manager there saw some of uh, the stuff near the trash bin, so he called uh, Chino PD reporting, and he suspected something, you know, like probably a stolen property. So uh, the officer came, recovered everything, and I went through my stuff and nothing was missing. Uh, probably they were looking for cash in this case. 
So uh, I asked her, say, how did you get my cell number that you could call me four times this morning? <laughs> and she said that she looked through my backpack, my briefcase, saw my checkbooks and my name on it, and so Garden Grove City on my checkbook. So she called Gar Garden Grove Police Department and see if there's such a guy named, you know, had the police report. So Garden Grove Police Department said, yeah, last night we got this information. That's how she got my cell phone number. And uh, so uh, this, I, I want to tell you a story because I do believe that, you know, you, you do have very, very good people in your police department. I mean, from that uh, apartment managers that took the time called police department and and this particular officer called me four times with her persistent, tried to get a hold of me, and that, that mean a lot. It would, it's made my day. And um, so, yes, of course, I have to open the new account, but I got my passport back and a few other things. I got my laptop back uh, on that. So uh, I, I came here today, and again, I'd like to thank all of you, your leadership, and I, think, I want to thank the, the chief and the police folks, and please let her know. Uh, Wes, would it. you please come up and and meet Trey? Th thank you very much. We we appreciate that. And Yolanda is an incredible employee, and I'm I'm glad to hear that uh, you had such a great experience with with her. Yeah. So. And and, I, and you know, I look at your mission statement, and uh, if I may, um, I think you should add two more words to it at the end: care and service to our community and beyond. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the time. Thank you so much for coming this evening and telling us that. We are very, very proud of our police department. Um, we think they do exceptional work, and we know that they go way beyond what's required to do what's right. Yeah. So thank you very much, and I'm glad that you got your stuff back. Yeah, all right, thank you. That's unusual. That is amazing. Thank you very much. Okay, now the next written request to speak has no name. It just says... I think it says, um, well, park in downtown, and then something, oh, speeders on Norton Avenue. <laughs> uh, first of all, I can't, that's an act I can't follow, so I'm going <laughs> to read something I have out of order. I can't emphasize enough the great job our police are doing. All of, their, all of my interactions with Chino police have been positive. Even the one time I was pulled over for a broken taillight. They're fantastic jobs. So, so when you hear the next part of this, I'm not, not <laughs> down right. on Okay, okay. Uh, speeders on Norton Avenue, since the industrial area south of Schaefer Air was developed, between Chino Avenue and Schaefer. Uh, the Chino PD set up a speed recording monitor about a year ago. The majority of the speeders on Norton Avenue were, the majority of the cars on Norton Avenue were be speeding, were proven to be speeding include two, two traveling over 90 miles an hour in a residential street. During midday, when children are pleasant, so I have an interest in this, uh, they, all, they also, someone from the city also put up a radar displays northbound and southbound, which helped a little, but they're still speeders. They basically post what you're doing and tell you to slow down and stuff like that. There's one at San Vicente and one further down the street. What will it take to slow them down? 25 versus 30 mile an hour speed limit, speed bumps, stop signs at various streets, constant police presence. They can't be there all the time, sorry. They got other things to do. Uh, we feel like we're being a prisoner in our own homes. So, but the most important reason I'm here is uh, something else. I just wanted to get that in there and make sure the police know I do very much appreciate. This is a wonderful town to live in. I've lived here for 40 years. I wasn't born here, but anyway, parks. Parks are a very important part of city life. Uh, even an article in our wonderful Chino Champion about a year ago, the Chino prides itself on being one of the 50 best uh, communities to raise children. And part of that, an important part, is parks. There was a smaller park on Central Avenue, north of Chino Avenue, that was mostly destroyed to put in the Caroline Owens Community Center. And even the sign disappeared eventually arguably not best, maybe the best use of that land. Maybe a park was a better use. You can argue that. But with the deactivation and demolition of the fire station adjacent and south of the former park site, 
we in Chino have an opportunity to restore this vital park. We need to take action now before this irreplaceable property can be directed, redirected to another use. I think this is an excellent time to have the city council look into, can we turn, restore the park in its glory across the street? That was there when I moved in and maybe we can get it back and the kids can play there. We do have a master plan that we have approved. <clears throat> That's where the new city hall will eventually go. I appreciate your input. We are in the process of looking at our master plan for parks and where we can locate more parks because we also agree that they're extremely important for our community. And my heart goes out to you about the speeders because in our neighborhood, it's like the Ontario Raceway up and down our main street. And uh, we've had the signs out there. I don't know what it takes. Um, we have people in our community that have no regard for safety or people's quality of life. And or the children. Is, it is, is going to take a kid getting splatted? <clears throat> I understand. I'm sorry. Understand, sir. Thank you very much for being here this evening. But yeah, whatever we can do about it. I've personally seen on two different occasions cars side by side racing southbound or northbound. That hasn't happened in the last five years. That's not recent. Yeah. So the police are doing a wonderful job and it is, it's going down, but we're still, today I saw a car going through there at 55 to 60 miles an hour. Yeah. I know, and then and the propensity now to run red lights, yep. you know, turning right, just not even stopping, running stop signs. I don't know. There's just uh, there's a disregard for traffic safety anymore. There is. But the I know our officers are on it as much as possible. You're right. They can't be everywhere all the time, but they are trying. Yeah. Thank there's, you very I've much. noticed that in the last there. two years that the number of cars running red lights, not just in Chino, everywhere. Oh, no, everywhere. I travel a lot for work. Yeah. It's like... What happened here? I know. I agree. Karen? Sir, I'm familiar with that area. And while there's always work to be done when it comes to speeding cars in neighborhoods, just questions, is the, has the traffic calming striping helped at all in your neighborhood? Because we do have requests for that in other neighborhoods. I'm just wondering, as a resident there, if you've seen some effect with, with the in installation of that. When I was writing my notes, I forgot to put that in there. And that did help. That really does. It makes the roads seem narrower so people don't go quite as fast. Instead of doing 70, they're only doing 40, 50. I, I understand. Know. But yeah. it is helping. Okay. But you still get the outliers that's going there, the, the examples that they've proven where the 95 mile an hour on that street in the middle of the day. Whoa. It is <laughs> but yet, terrible. But they're outliers. Yeah. It is. My, um, actually, my brother was coming to my house just north, one block north of that one day getting to make a, ready to make a left turn onto Rushmore mm -hmm. instead of a driver coming northbound actually passed him on the left while he was getting ready to make his left-hand turn at about 90 miles per hour. So thank yeah. goodness he was alert to it. But yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I well, wish I could street, offer the solution. I don't. On our street, I, we I, have I'd it all like to be constructive, and, but I can't. But the police have certainly been out there, and they certainly helped. And when they're out there, it helps. They've had their motor officers out there uh, doing radar. I guess if you are not don't have a radar, you can't just look at it and say, oh, that guy's speeding. You have to have the radar. And the, but. I wish there was something we could do. Uh, it is a residential street. The speed limit is 30 miles an hour because it's a secondary to a primary arterial, whatever it is. Anyway, and the city gets special funding for that street to keep it at 30. But why are people doing 50 and 60? <laughs> I'm, I'm confident, the, like the mayor said, the, the police department will pay attention and do their part to help continue yeah. to help down there. Yeah. I appreciate your time. Is there any information I can provide you? The traffic calming stripes have helped. That's good to hear. That's good After to they hear. repaved it, especially. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for doing a wonderful job. I've lived here for 40 years. This is the first time I've ever come to a meeting. I'm not, I'm not used <laughs> we to ought public come, speaking. Come obviously. more often. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Those are the only written requests uh, to speak that I have. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council? I'll call the students back there. Pardon me. Now, we have a tradition here that uh, when we know that there are students in the audience, we call them up because we know that they're here for an assignment for a class. So, of course, you know, uh, the teacher will want proof that they were actually at the council meeting. So I understand we have Ontario Christian students here. So I would like to invite you to the podium and give us your name, the class that you're in, who your teacher is. Come on up. And then you have proof that you're here. Good evening, 
Council. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, we're doing fine. Uh, my name is Hayden Arthur. I am a student in Mr. Jeremy Zydema's AP government class. Um, Hi. Um, I, my name is Lauren Liang. I'm also a student in Mr. Jeremy Zydema's AP government class. Uh, my name is Po Chen Lin, and I'm also in uh, Mr. Zaidama's IP government class. Thank you. My name is Jalil Bailey, and I'm also in um, Jeremy um, Zaidama government class. Okay. Well, thank you for being here this evening. Is there anything that you would like to tell us about your school or anything that you've observed about the city of Chino? Uh, well, uh, obviously, Ontario Christian is located in Ontario. I know, shocker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, Actually, your football field is in located Chino. in Chino. No kidding. Yes. Really. I stand corrected. Wow. Okay. <laughs> the school part is in Ontario. The football field's in Chino. And my grandson went to Ontario High School and or Ontario Christian and was a football player. So. Wow. Well, uh, that being said, I've lived in Ontario for about, I want to say, seven or eight years. Uh, so um, the, I've commonly, you know, uh, been, I mean, obviously I've been in Ontario, but I mean, Chino's like right next door. So I've seen firsthand um, uh, how nice of a city Chino is. And again, I would like to comment and say that uh, the fire department, police force have done a wonderful job at, uh, uh, with the city upkeep uh, and making sure that citizens are safe and heard. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you, just have a, you have a wonderful city. You guys are doing a great job. And I think on behalf of all of us, I'd like to thank you for the wonderful job that you're doing. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for being here this evening. OK, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council before we move on? OK, seeing none, we'll move on now to the consent calendar. Do any council members wish to have any items pulled for consideration? Curtis? Uh, item 17, please. OK, we will pull item number 17 for separate consideration. Any other items to pull? OK, seeing none, then I would entertain a motion and a second for the balance of the consent calendar. Motion from Councilman Florence, second from Councilman Lucio. Balance of the consent calendar passes unanimously. Item number 17, rescission of drought response action resolution. This is to adopt resolution number 2023-025, rescinding the significant water supply shortage declaration and corresponding implementation of level one and level two measures described in the city's water shortage contingency plan. I'd like to ask for a staff report this evening from Dave Crosley. Mr. Crosley. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Uloa and members of the City Council. Uh, last year, on May 28th, 2022, Governor Newsom issued an executive order directing the State Water Resources Control Board to adopt emergency regulations to cope with ongoing drought conditions that existed at that time. Those emergency regulations were adopted by the State Water Resources Control Board on May 24th, 2022, and they required urban water suppliers such as the city of Chino to implement water use restrictions corresponding to a 20% water supply shortage. The city complied with the state's requirements when the city council declared a water supply shortage by resolution 2022-037 since that time, a series of atmospheric rivers have occurred in California, resulting in improved water supply conditions, and the state has lifted its 20% water supply shortage requirement while maintaining certain provisions under its ongoing drought emergency proclamation. Therefore, staff recommends the City Council adopt Resolution 2023-025 rescinding resolution 2022-037, ending the council's declaration of a water supply shortage. That completes my comments. I'd be happy to address any questions. Thank you very much, Dave. Uh, Councilman Burton, did you have questions or comments? Just a comment. I, I think it's important that our residents uh, hear this and understand uh, the situation. Although the, the, the drought is not over, uh, per se, uh, we in California uh, are always uh, going to experience this cycle uh, over the, you know, over 
a section of years, uh, it's extremely important to continue to conserve, uh, but uh, for the benefit of our residents in the community, I thought it was important that uh, Dave bring this to us and explain um, what our resolution was on it. So thank you very much. Okay, any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the audience? Okay, seeing none, then I would entertain a motion and a second to approve item number 17. Motion from Councilman Burton, second by Mayor Pro Tem Comstock. Item passage unanimously. Next on the agenda is under new business, item number 18, Memor Memorandum of Understanding with the City of Ontario for Storm Drain Line I. Approve a Memorandum of Understanding with the City of Ontario for the financing and construction of Storm Drain Line I. Staff report this evening will be provided by our Assistant City Engineer, Jesus Plasencia. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Storm Drain Line I is a proposed uh, master plan storm drain facility intended to serve both the cities of Chino and Ontario. According to the city's master plan of drainage, the storm drain will be constructed along Euclid Avenue from Merrill Avenue down to Prado Lake, south of Pine. The storm drain will consist of a double 10 foot by eight foot concrete box that receives runoff flows from approximately 1,898 acres of land in Ontario located east of Euclid and north of Merrill, plus 140 acres of land in Chino located in the westernmost portion of the, of the preserve near Euclid. The total cost to construct the facility is estimated to be 51 million, which includes additive costs such as engineering design, construction management, and contingencies. Line I is identified in the city's current development impact fee program as an above ground channel along Euclid with drainage crossings at major intersections such as Kimball, Bickmore, and Pine. The current DIF program also includes an interim above ground channel along Euclid that would remain in place until the ultimate drainage facility is built. These facilities were estimated to cost 18 million and 4 million respectively based on the current DIF program. However, as part of the city's master plan of drainage update, uh, it was concluded that the ultimate facility had to be constructed underground rather than above ground due to the limited available space along Euclid and, and due to existing utility conflicts. In April 2022, uh, city staff brought forth a comprehensive update to, uh, to the DIF program for the city council's consideration. <coughs> this, upda this update included a revised scope and estimated cost for line I to be consistent with the city's master plan of drainage. Uh, prior to and during the council meeting, the Lewis companies uh, raised concerns about the proposed increased cost to be allocated to the Preserve DIV program for the construction of Line I. In Lewis's opinion, the allocated cost for Line I should be proportionate to the ultimate stormwater flow contributed by each agency. Uh, this would therefore result in a reduced allocation of costs to the Preserve DIV program and a corresponding increase in the cost allocated to the City of Ontario. Uh, so that City Council unanimous, unanimous, unanimously approved Resolution 2022-026, updating the DIF program with two provisions. Uh, the first being that for the storm drain DIF program, the only revision made was to adjust the fees by 5.7% to consider the most recent construction price index. Uh, the second provision was to, uh, was to have staff collaborate with both the City of Ontario and Lewis companies to reach a mutually agreeable cost share for Line I. Uh, as a result of discussions with Ontario and Lewis companies over the past year, city staff is recommending the city council approve a memorandum of understanding between Chino and Ontario, specifying a cost share split for line I. Chino's cost share is proposed to be 58%, which corresponds to 29.58 million, and Ontario's share would be 42%, which corresponds to 21.42 million. This cost share split is consistent with the amount of historical and future stormwater flows to be conveyed through each respective jurisdiction. While stormwater flows contributed by the preserve are relatively minor, Chino is also legally responsible for uh, accepting the existing pre-development flows from Ontario, which is why Chino would be responsible for a majority of the costs uh, in the proposed MOU. Uh, the cost allocated to the preserve DIF program for the construction of Line I is proposed to be six and a half million. This amount is consistent with the Mitigation Fee Act, which in the context of stormwater flows, uh, suggests that local government cannot require developers to fund infrastructure intended to accept historic runoff that predates new development. 
This in turn leaves Chino with a budget shortfall of 23.08 million for its fair share costs. City staff intends to offset the shortfall through other funding sources, which include grants, bonds, and contributions from outside agencies such as the San Bernardino <coughs> County Flood Control District. On March 13, 2023, the cities of Chino and Ontario formally requested the Flood Control District to consider Line I as a regional storm drain facility and cost share 50% of the construction of Line I. If approved, the Flood Control District would commit to financing 50% of the cost with the cities contributing the other 50%. This revised cost share would therefore reduce Chino's contribution to 14.79 million. In addition, assuming the city council approves a storm drain diff program update at a future to be determined date that allocates six and a half million to the preserved diff program for the construction of line I, the city's budget shortfall of 23.08 million would decrease to 8.3 million. That concludes my report. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments? This has always been a difficult item for me because it, to me, it obviously, I mean, when you look at our map, it's the majority of Ontario that's providing the water to this. I do not understand why they are not footing the majority of this bill. Well, um, that is a question that I've worked with staff for some time. Um, it, you know, unfortunately, the genesis of a lot of that water is considered historic flows from Ontario and uh, water law uh, requirements are that you have to continue to accommodate historic flows. Having said that, to the extent Ontario had additional projects develop, it's, it's almost like the, uh, you know, you, you have a road that's working just fine, but you add another set of traffic and, and it causes you to expend a ton of money to widen that road. So mm -hmm. we made some arguments to Ontario in that regard. Uh, ultimately, we just, had the, the, the line has to continue to accept those historic flows that have uh, flowed through there, but that is some of the legal arguments that we were able to make. You know, the other frustrating thing is that all used to be farmland, and so the land percolated. And didn't it? I mean, some of it was runoff, obviously, but a lot of that land, uh, the water would settle, percolate down into the groundwater basin. Now it's being all paved over, so obviously it increases the storm flows in the storm drain. But historically, a lot of that water did not go down in a storm drain, even though it was above ground. So it's um, it's one of the hard, another hard pill to swallow, so to speak. It just it's a shame because we need that water to percolate down into the groundwater basin, but it is not going to. Um, what are the chances that San Bernardino Flood Control District will agree to 50% of the cost share? I think there's good, a good chance they'll agree. Uh, I've spoken to Flood Control District staff, and my understanding is that they, they do consider it to be a regional facility because it is going to serve more than one agency. Uh, right now, they are in the process of uh, discussing the uh, the project uh, amongst upper management, and my understanding on the next step is for them to provide us with an agreement for cost sharing between the three parties. Now, flood control, that's flood control district one, correct? Is it one, that uh, area? I'm not sure, it, this, so the, the, the funding is, uh, I think they call it, it's zone two. Oh, it's zone two. Yeah. Because traditionally, I think it was zone one was always short on their funding, and they never had money for anything. Even the state street storm drain, they were short on. So it's going to be interesting to me, in particular, to see if they actually have the funding to help. I hope they do. I certainly hope they do, because it. Uh, I don't think it's fair that we're burdened with the majority of that cost. Council comments or questions? No, I I, I, I agree with you, Mayor. I, I think, you know, they have a, an enormous amount of of new development that's going in just north of us, where they're putting in infrastructure, sewer drains, roads. Same thing with the Chino Airport. They also are responsible for a lot of this runoff that comes into our area. Is there anything that we're going to potentially get from the county as far as the airport for the runoff, or is that what you're anticipating with when you're talking about the county stepping up and giving us some money? Is that as a result of the airport also giving us this runoff? That that's a result of the project being considered a, a, a regional storm drain facility. So it doesn't really necessarily have to do with the fact that there's some runoff coming from the airport. 
It's the fact that there's runoff coming from both city of Chino and Ontario. So yeah, because it, flood control district. Yeah, because if you if you look at it, I mean, there it looks like their expansion goes all the way, you know, basically all the way to the length of the airport, and then we just have that little sliver that runs along Euclid, but yet all the water is being funneled in that direction. Um, I, I I agree with the mayor. I, I mean, I know that we obviously were, are responsible for some of that, but I think for what they're putting in on the north side, I think us paying 58% seems seems a little high for for me at least. I would agree. Any other comments? Karen? Mayor, I'm just going to echo everybody's sentiments. I agree as well. I do know that this project has been studied and has been worked on by our staff for a very long period of time, not just by the City of Ontario, but by the airport, by our staff, and by the development community and the preserve. Um, I'm not a fan of it either, but I am a fan of how our staff is approaching it as a regional project. I do believe that there is promise because of all the entities involved that hopefully that will, we will get some of that funding. So thank you to our staff for that. Uh, the other thing is we know that this is so greatly needed. It's in our future and it's not gonna get any less expensive to construct it. And once it is constructed with what they're developing down there, as everybody knows here, with the, with the with the watershed that's going to occur with the additional development, um, it's going to be welcome to our community because it's going to help control severe flooding during what Mr. Cross had just described as our atmospheric rivers or our different weather patterns that we're going to experience moving forward. So although it's like the mayor said, a hard pill to swallow, I'm happy to see it underway. And I'm, I'm also very pleased to see that our staff is pursuing support and funding it. So thank you, Jesus. So, so my other question would be, if for some reason the county decides not to fund half of it, where do you anticipate us getting the funding for it? And how long, if we don't get the funding for it from the county, how long is it gonna take us to generate the funding to be able to fund this project? Uh, like I mentioned in the report, we're uh, looking for grant and bond opportunities. Uh, this is a, a really large, uh, project that is going to be built over time and so there, there is the possibility that based on the funding that we do have now we might be able to at least uh, fund and, and construct a portion of the of the storm drain as we work on uh, obtaining additional funds uh, one thing that's important to point out is the portion of the storm drain that is uh, south of Pine Avenue that outlets into Prado Lake that's uh, gonna require jurisdictional approval from Orange County Flood and Army Corps of Engineers. So that, that process takes some time. So, so this project is gonna, is gonna take a while to, to be fully built out. Hey, so, so will we know whether or not our application as a regional project will be accepted? I don't have a, a date yet, but I- Just an estimation. Uh, within the first half of this year, I think. I just would request back that you keep the council informed on that process and how, how that is proceeding, please. Okay. okay, thank you very much. If there are no other comments or questions, I would entertain a motion and a second. Somebody has to make a motion and a second. It's a motion from Councilman Burton, second from Mayor Pro Tem Comstock. Mark. Item passes unanimously. See, it's a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> okay, next on the agenda is mayor and council reports. Um, I will make mine very quick. Wednesday, April 5th, I attended the Omnitrans and San Bernardino County Transportation Authority Boards of Directors. Tuesday, April 11th, a council workshop on Title 12 and the general plan update. On Wednesday, April 12th, I attended the mayor's prayer breakfast. <clears throat> Thursday, April 13th, I attended the Omnitrans Admin and Finance Committee meeting and San Bernardino County Transportation Authority Transit Committee and Metro Valley Study Session. Saturday, April 15th, Councilman Burton and I attended the opening ceremony of the Chino Youth Track and Field Meet at Don Lugo High School. And on Tuesday today, um, April 18th, I attended my regular meeting with City Manager Reich and then we had the East Side Water Treatment Ribbon Cutting Ceremony 
and a couple of closed sessions before the council meeting. Mayor Pro Tem Comstock. Thank you, Mayor. On Wednesday, April 5th, I attended a public meeting regarding the annexation that was proposed along Easton Avenue along the west portion of our city. It was a very good meeting. We had a lot of residents in attendance at that meeting, a lot of concerns. Uh, it was just government, good government in action and in progress. A lot of people raised uh, some concerns that they were about the annexation, about the, the land use that's up there. It gave our staff, our development community, and our residents a chance to, to work, to talk through some of those things and express their concerns. On Monday, April 10th, I attended my one-on-one -on -one with the city manager. On Tuesday, April 11th, I attended the council workshop here at City Hall regarding uh, the amendments that the mayor spoke about to Title 12 and our updates to our general plan, our proposed, up, our, sorry, our progress to the general plan update. And bright and early Wednesday morning on April 12th, I flew to Sacramento with Council Member Flores and staff member Jack Morgan. He's actually the assistant to the city manager to attend the Cal City's leadership conference. It was a very well attended conference with uh, Cal Cities. It used to be, they're rebranding themselves. It used to be called the League of California Cities. Now they call themselves Cal Cities. It gave uh, Council Member Flores, uh, uh, staff member Morgan and myself uh, an opportunity to meet directly with Assemblyman Rodriguez and our, our new Senator, uh, Susan Rubio, and talk about legislation that is affecting not just public safety and development, but just local control to communities. Some of the things that we spoke with both of them about are were Assembly Bill 1708, which deals with some cleanup legislation to Proposition 47 involving commercial theft. Assembly Bill 257, which are encampments by unsheltered people and the continued enforcement for the quality of our life to our community. There's some legislation proposed to make it mandatory for the notification on that to move it to 72 hours versus 24, as well as Assembly Bill 797, which is uh, local government and police boards. If you look on some of our legislative bill, uh, some of the legislation that we're presently tracking, it gives a scorecard now whether we support or oppose or requesting amendments. The meetings with the Senator and the Assemblyman were, I, I think, very, very meaningful, very, very good. Uh, as we know that they're not always, not going to get every ask that we ask them for, but they're also both Assemblyman Rodriguez and Senator Rubio are carrying important bills for us right now. Assemblyman Rodriguez is helping us with the relinquishment of Euclid Avenue to, so we can get local control over that. And Senator Rubio is actually carrying legislation through the Surplus Land Act for us to get local control over the Star facility. So it also gave us an opportunity to talk to them about those things as well. Mary, as you know, we, we discussed with her that we, we would like to not only uh, have that land from Stark relinquished to us, but come up with a plan for it. She gave us some advice to how to make us more successful in doing so, which we brought back to staff. Jack, I want to thank you for all the hard work you put into that trip. I think it was very, very good. Uh, Chris, thank you. Additionally, we attended three very good uh, breakout sessions. We heard a very good motivational speaker about why what we do on the local level is important to our communities, our service as elected officials. Um, Operation Home Key, which was a, is, is sort of taking foot up and down the state and taking some older motels or hotels and communities and converting them to affordable housing, which I thought was very innovative. A very good presentation uh, for Jeremy and the fire department from the city of Beverly Hills about their new nurse practitioner program that they're using effectively. You're probably familiar with it. As well as I see um, uh, Sonia's here. There was a, uh, a, a great presentation about just the cooperation between local entities, local cities, as well as school boards about public safety. And I was pleased to see that we still have a great model in place. Believe it or not, there's a lot of school boards out there that when the, def the call for defunding the police came over the past few years, they did it. A lot of places removed their school resource officers from not just high schools, but junior highs as part of that movement. And I'm really proud of this council. It actually occurred before I was elected uh, you know, to serve on it. I was still sitting as the, uh, as the chief of police for a period of time. But for the cities that maintain their SROs, they're very grateful. In fact, the majority of them are trying to figure out how to put them back on school campuses right now. And I am grateful for that relationship that we have with the board. We always have had it when it comes to our SROs, not just here locally from the city of Chino, but also in Chino Hills. So thank you, uh, Sonia, for that continued support and to the rest of your board. 
Um, Mayor, I, th I thought it was a very productive meeting up there, so thank you for allowing us to go. And then, of course, um, I attended the uh, closed session tonight before before this meeting, Mayor. So thank you very much. Karen, I do have a question, and that yes, is, um, as we learned, many times our um, legislative representatives will bring forward a, a good law, a, a good piece of legislation yes. that will help, especially with crime prevention, and then to end up finding out that it is shot down in committee. Yes. Did you have discussions with the Assemblyman and the Senator about that very issue? Mayor, it's interesting you mentioned that. I should have mentioned that in, in my report. It was refreshing to learn that Senator Rubio and actually Assemblymember Rodriguez are very, very pro-law enforcement, very pro-public safety. Both of them mentioned about several pieces of legislation that they have helped bring forward to the Public Safety Committee and both of them being extremely disappointed that the Public Safety Committee continues to turn down legislation, whether it be about crimes against children or um, a recent one about ghost guns and the serialization of those guns and, and, and the penalties for that. And there came a discussion about maybe, you know, in addition to us going up there and speaking with them, but when they're back here, attending some of those Public Safety Committees to be heard at, the, at those hearings, Mayor. Um, they were equally frustrated when we spoke about some of these pieces of legislation and them just not being able to get them through Public Safety Committee. If you haven't heard of the term, they, the, the, the term is actually uh, some, some bed space. Yeah, the, the Public Safety Committee is very opposed to in, uh, passing any new legislation or, or you know, any new enhancements that add um, either jail or prison sentencing in the state of California, even though some of this legislation needs to change in order to keep up with the laws and keep us effective in keeping our community safe. So thank you for asking that question, Mayor. I would like to see um, us, the city of Chino, head up an effort of the Inland Empire with other cities and their legislative committees to go up there and actually attend those public uh, public safety committee meetings and um, try to lobby that committee to pass some of these laws that they're shooting down. We've got to start putting pressure on these people because we, you know, I, I understand the governor wants to save money by closing down prisons, closing down jails, letting prisoners out, but what it's doing is victimizing our public. And so he might be saving money at a state level, but it is costing us and our citizens dearly in the crime that's being committed. So I would like to see the city of Chino head up an effort to start lobbying. I'm smiling, Mayor, because uh, one evening we actually, uh, staff and I had dinner with the inland chapter of Cal Cities. That was actually discussed with Laura Varela, our representative. When I was uh, working at the Chino Police Department, we did that locally. I know that Chief Simmons still does it on uh, law enforcement legislative days. We traveled up there together, met with our with our elected officials. If uh, We didn't always go to committee meetings, but there was a discussion amongst the staff and there was support from the re from council members in the inland chapter to, to head that. Um, I hope you don't mind, Linda. I asked Jack to meet with you at one point in, in, in trying to head that. I think with Laura and, and Jack, you're doing a great job at, at tracking this legislation and explaining it and agendizing it for us. I like the way we're doing our legislative review now, Mayor, and, and it was a, it, that was actually discussed at our, at our dinner that night. So it was just you know, more food for thought, and uh, we have to get in front of the, some of those committees. I think we need to start taking a very strong stand. I agree, Mayor. Just sitting complaining about it and whining it is not doing us any good. I think we need to start being very forceful and take some positions. It's it's not enough. Um, you know, the letters help at getting in front of people appearing in committee. When we were up there, there were people appearing in front of committees and uh, attesting the, either their support or their opposition to it. And that is how it has to happen is through personal relationships, getting up there. I mean, I know the sheriff had a full-time legislative analyst that actually stayed in Sacramento to track that and meet with people. That is how it does happen. Again, we may not get everything, but. Um, uh, one of the one of the bills that we're tracking right now is a sunset clause. Is it Assembly Bill 35, Jack? Is that what it is, or about the D D Department of General Services? I'm sorry, I can't think of it. 423. Thank you, Jack. And that there's there is a sunset clause that's set to expire in that uh, that <coughs> that we're presently living with, but they've written in some some language into that that would allow for the state of California to any state-owned property to appoint the Department of General Services to come in and develop how they please in our communities and completely disobeying any of our any of our building standards, our ordinances, and do whatever it is they need to do that would be completely non-conforming to our, to, 
to not only our general plan, but also some of our building standards. That, that ought to unnerve almost anybody to take away that type of local control to us, just to have somebody from the state who doesn't do that just come and say, we own this, and we're going to develop it this way, and then hand it over to us and say, you figure out how to, how to, to service it. So it's stuff like that, Mayor, that we do, that, that we should be out in front. Um, I even explained that to my dad <laughs> this past weekend, and my dad's like, how, how is that happening? As a dad, because our, our voices aren't, aren't being heard up there. So. But it's going to take more than going up there once a year. Uh, it's a big commitment, Mayor, but it does take going up there more than once a year because it is about personal relationships. It's about it's about knowing your way around Sacramento. I spent some time with our our, our lobbyist and in, in, uh, Joe Gonzalez with with Jason. You know, very knowledgeable. But it takes people going up there, and I think there is strength in numbers. Oh, there definitely is. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Councilman Burt. Thank you, Mayor. On April 5th, I attended uh, customer service training over at the police department. Uh, this is just, was one of several training sessions that uh, the city afforded uh, the training to all city employees. Very, very good training. On April 6th, I attended the Chino Valley Unified School District school board meeting with uh, Council Member Flores. Uh, President Shaw, thank you very much for your kind words. Uh, we do want to make an impact uh, at the school board meetings as well, uh, where there is a resource uh, for you and the school board as well as our citizens out there uh, at the same time. So thank you very much. On April 8th, uh, Council, or I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Comstock and I, she failed to mention this, but we both attended a Don Lugo Sports Boosters fundraiser <coughs> at Don Lugo High School, and it was a kickball game between the varsity baseball players and the varsity softball players. Oh, geez. So we, our role, we were both umpires uh, <laughs> of this game, and it was, it was a lot of fun. I, I think I got dirt kicked on my shoes a couple of times for a couple of calls, but that did not sway my decision, not one bit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we proceeded, and it was just a great time and a great fundraiser and a partnership uh, with, with the school district, and uh, we just really had a great time. <laughs> April 15th, I attended the Chino Youth Track and Field meet with the, uh, with the mayor at Don Lugo High School. April 17th, my one-on-one -on -one with the city manager. And I also attended the planning commission meeting. Uh, at the planning commission meeting, we had a gentleman uh, come up and he wanted to get a business in the city that, that the Planning Commission took a look at, and I believe they approved it. Uh, but one of the, the chairman of the commission asked the owner of the business, how did you find out about the city of Chino? And he said, you know, he says, I don't know, I just got a telephone call. Is Chris Kennedy still here? Did he take no, off? He's gone. But he says, I got a telephone call from a city employee by the name of Chris Kennedy Chris is the manager of our economic development uh, department. Uh, Chris got a hold of this gentleman, knew that he was leaving another city, and let him know promptly that we had an outstanding location for him uh, right here in our city that would serve uh, his business like none other. And the gentleman took a look at it, met with Chris, and here he is, and they're gonna open a business here in town. So we're really excited about that. Chris did a great job. Kudos to Chris. I see Jackie in the audience. If you can let him know that as well, I'd, I'd appreciate it. So, um, and then today, ribbon cutting at the East Side Water Treatment Facility with the rest of the City Council, and that concludes my report, Mayor. Okay, Councilman Flores. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. On the fifth um, of April, I attended the Omni Trans Board of Directors meeting um, virtually. Uh, that same day, I attended a neighborhood meeting uh, with Mayor Pro Tem Comstock um, regarding the proposed annexation and development over on East End. On the 6th of April, I had a meeting uh, with Norma Torres, and um, that was a great meeting. I had a chance to discuss some items of, of importance to the city of Chino, and uh, so thank you, Norma, for taking your time to meet with me. Uh, that same night, I attended the Chino Valley Unified School uh, District meeting. On the 10th of April, I had an Omnitrans orientation, so that was pretty sweet. Got a tour of the uh, facilities over there, and um, 
again, um, just a great time and good information. On the 11th of April, I had my one-on-one -on -one with our city manager. Uh, that same day, I had a meeting with a um, organization called Adrian's World Incorporated. I uh, met with one of the reps called uh, Felicia Guzman, and um, they are um, a nonprofit here in the in, in, you know in um, here in the area that focuses on um, children with autism. So I'm looking to partner with them soon, and you know bring some some good to the city and some awareness. On the 12th of April, excuse me, from the 12th to the 14th, as Mayor Pro Tem Comstock mentioned. Um, but, you know, went to Sacramento and had a chance to lobby for some, again, um, items of importance to the city of Chino. And uh, one thing I do want to mention, Mayor, and I'm glad you, you brought that up, right? There's power in numbers. That's the exact conversation we had um, with, with, with Jack and Karen. And um, I, I, I think what was pretty, um, there was a divine moment in that um, Laura um, just kind of walked into one of our meetings um, unexpect and unexpectedly. Um, she thought she was walking into someone else's meeting. But for her to see um, that... You know, we had everything agendized, and right, we were just hitting everything, you know, on the nail. Um, there's not much time to waste up there, right? There's not, there's no time to, you know, say, hey, how was your weekend? How was your day before you get into meetings? You just got to go for it because um, they're really super busy up there, and um, and that's what we did. And again, we did have a chance to speak with some of our neighboring cities, and um, I'm, I'm more than excited to see the city of Chino, you know, take this on and, um, you know, bring everybody in and, again, um, be the uh, leading force in, um, you know, in, in bringing some legislation that benefits the city of Chino. And I will say this is the perfect time because we do have two state legislators that are um, sort of in line with a lot of our beliefs as well, and that's important to take advantage of right now. Um, but with that being said, I'm on the 17th of April. I had um, a board meeting with the, uh, with the chamber, and a quick update on that, you know, they are looking for uh, they are starting, uh, they created a, um, a, a, a nonprofit sector of, um, of the chamber just to open up themselves to more funding. Um, so ha they have that underway. So that's pretty exciting um, just to, you know, just to give them more access to potential funding. Um, this morning, I had a chance to sit down and um, attend the Citizens Advisory Meeting uh, with CIM and CIW. Um, earlier today, well, along with the rest of the council, um, you know, had the Eastside Water Treatment Ribbon Cutting Ceremony. It was a great turnout. Thank you to our staff for putting that together. And Vivian, I'm not sure if you're in the crowd, but really great job of just, um, you know, um, you know, uh, um, just hosting the entire thing. And um, earlier today, we had a um, just a meeting, a training held by our Chino um, Police Department regarding some uh, disruptive, uh, potential disruptive meetings and potential um, active um, active shooters and um, but with that being said I just want to I know he left already but Mr. Wynn um, right the gentleman who spoke earlier um, just food for thought I mean that does sound pretty cool to our community and beyond um, just want to put that out there but with that being said thank you mayor that concludes my comments Councilman Lucio yes on, uh, on April 4th through April 6th I attended uh, mitigation for emergency managers training over in Riverside one of the things that uh, they were focusing on this training class was uh, mitigating any potential hazards that you have in your area, such as flooding. So I got with the instructor, we started talking about some of the issues that we have within our floodplain areas, obviously Euclid Avenue, uh, Pine Avenue. They said that there is some funding available for us um, to raise some of those streets through FEMA but we have to apply for some grants. So I forwarded the contact information to Amr and hopefully he can, he can connect with the individual that taught the class that could kind of guide us in the direction we need to go in. But he says that one of the things that we need to, to be able to get this type of funding is we, we put out a, a local hazards mitigation plan every five years. And our last one was done in 2018, so it should be being done, I think, now in 2023. But one of the things we have to identify as a hazard is obviously the flooding that we have continuously down there in the south end of our city. So as long as we have that identified and part of the mitigation being raising Pine Avenue and raising Euclid Avenue, then we could go to the Fed, federal government, FEMA, and ask them to try to give us some funding in order to raise those streets to offset some of the costs. So uh, I, I wasn't aware of that until I attended the training, but uh, obviously um, that is definitely something we should look into in order to get some additional funding because obviously we, we know how expensive it's gonna be to raise those streets. Um, on the 17th, I attended a meeting with, with the city manager. Um, and then later on that night, I met with, with Sonia Shaw and uh, 
Coach Angulo from Chino High School, and we were discussing there is a, obviously wrestling being a, one of the fastest growing sports, not just in, for males but for females, and uh, there's a model that's up in Central California that's working over in the Clovis area. It was started by uh, a principal by the name of Dr. Buchanan, and he's had a lot of success up there with a lot of the kids going off to college wrestling. Wrestling is big in the Ivy Leagues and a lot of the different uh, Division One schools, but they have a program that reaches into the elementary schools, and then with the elementary schools compete against each other, and then they also go into the junior high schools. And then by the time they get into high school, these kids are competing now. They're at a different level. There is no way that our kids going into high school, never wrestling before, showing up their freshman year, they may win local tournaments, they may win CIF locally, but once they start getting into masters or into the state tournament, they're not going to, they're not gonna place because they're going against kids that have been wrestling since they were six years old. Some of our local communities have already started inputting or instilling these programs within their schools like Covina, the high school Northview, has just started reaching into their junior highs and starting the programs at junior high levels to get these kids as a feeder program into their high school, but starting to get them to compete. Um, Eastvale has also be started it with their youth program, um, and they, I believe they call it Eastvale Elite, and they, I just saw a flyer that came out for them, and I, I showed my wife because my stepson, 50% of the time, he lives in Eastvale, and he lives right by the school. but. Roosevelt has identified that as something that they need to do, and they're, they're starting to move forward in, in that type of program. But I think, and, and, and Sonia agrees as well as the coach, that we have enough schools here and we have the competition with, you know, rivalry between Chino, Chino Hills to, to implement something like that. You know, start it in Chino, Chino Hills, have them compete against each other and hopefully in the elementary school levels and take down camps and, and compete in the junior high school levels. And then when our kids get to be in high school, they can be competitive like the rest of these schools. Um, I think it's, it's a great way to get kids involved. It's a great way to get kids off of their laptops or their iPads and, you know, TVs. But, you know, wrestling is one of those sports where you're going to lose. And even though you lose during that tournament that you may be competing in, you got to get right back in there and continue to wrestle if you want to if you want to place. So it teaches you a lot of values about, you know, competing, losing, getting back in there, competing again. So it, it's, it, it's something that, that I think we all have, you know, an interest in. And I just, if it comes to the point where, you know, we need some city support, I'd, I'd really appreciate if, if we could get behind this and, and help the, the school board as well as, you know, if we start a youth program that maybe we can't, we don't run through the school board that we potentially run it through the city um, but so we're looking at a bunch of different things. I know, I know that they have a youth program out of Chino, out of Ayala High School in Chino Hills. We used to have one out of Chino High School. We don't have one now. Um, but I think it's something that we should really get behind because I think it's anything that we can get our kids involved in, especially this being a sport that is really, really becoming popular among the girls, I think it's something we should do. Um, I also attended on the 18th a meeting with CIM and CIW today, and I did talk to the warden about a couple of things. One of the things that we talked about was we had that, well, they consider it a walk away, I guess, when they're from the fire camp, they walk away. When they're from the prison, they escape. So one of the things I asked them was, you know, when we hear the testing of the alarm system every Friday at noon, they sound the alarms but we've never heard the alarms at any of the escapes, whether it's from the fire camp or whether it's from the prison. Because we've had both in 20 years since I've been here in the city of Chino. We've I've never heard the alarm go off other than testing. He, he said he wasn't aware why they didn't sound it off when we did have escapes from the prison, but he did explain that in their uh, procedures that they have within the prison, when they walk away from a camp, they don't sound the alarm because they consider that a separate facility from Chino's institution for men. But they said that they would look at it and see if it was something that, that they should incorporate because some of our residents in, in College Park, not from this particular escape, but from the, the escape before, the guy was in the neighborhood. He made his way from the fire camp all the way into Euclid Avenue. He was in the houses around Euclid Avenue because I'm, I'm assuming he, is, he expected somebody to pick him up and when somebody didn't pick him up, then he was picked up by the police department. Um, 
but obviously the one that escaped us last time or walked away, he was immediately picked up off of Central Avenue. So we had that discussion, and he, he, was, he said he would look into potentially doing something different to notify us. I also told him that the light wasn't, never turns on when there's an escape. So they said they did test that they changed the light bulb so that the light does function. Uh, I guess it wasn't functioning for a while. And then we had the discussion about the water tower. So they were 100% supportive of letting us do something with the water tower and painting a mural on it. Um, I told them that you would talk to them when you go over there and meet with them. Uh, they said that you know he, he didn't know whether or not they had been approached before, but uh, he's definitely interested in allowing us to do it now. So whether they were not interested before, they're interested in it now. <laughs> Um, so I thought that was positive. And, and that, that, you know, at least this warden seems to want to have a working relationship with us, which, which is a positive thing. And, at, and then also later on the day, I attended the Eastside Water Treatment for the ribbon cutting ceremony that we had. Uh, and with that, I'd just like to end. <laughs> You'd like to end. <laughs> City Manager Wright. Nothing tonight, Mayor. City Attorney Galante. Um, just one observation. I know, Mayor, you suggested some coalition to address the early pr uh, prison release uh, initiatives and legislation. Um, I know I've heard some of the legislators or, or the officials that are involved in the Orange County COG that, I'm, uh, that I represent raise some of the same issues. So if there's ever an, in an interest of, you know, pursuing that coalition and maybe expanding it into Orange County, I know there there would be significant support. That would be great. I'd like to get Orange County, Riverside County, and San Bernardino County all together and start lobbying for some legislation changes, especially at the committee level. It's no ridiculous. further report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chief Simmons. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Wanted to invite our community uh, to a meeting tomorrow night. We're looking for community emergency response team volunteers. We have done several, several it's what we call CERT trainings in combination with our partners at the fire department. And so we're hosting an informational meeting tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at the Chino Police Department. If, uh, if people out there are interested in becoming a city of Chino volunteer with our community emergency response team. Also, I want to I want to give a shout out to our our investigators and the rest of our staff who were able to apprehend the third suspect uh, in the in the homicide that we had earlier in the month. Um, they did a fantastic job, as as I previously said. Uh, we don't have many homicides here, but we have a hundred percent our record of hundred percent of getting an arrest behind those. Um, and so again, I'm grateful for them and their efforts to get all three of the suspects involved with that in custody. That's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. No, just congratulations once again. Um, I just wish the word would get out to the criminal world that don't come to Chino and do anything because you're going to get caught. You will eventually get caught. I understand the uh, the guy turned himself in because he knew it was eventually going to happen. The, the heat was on, and, and we strategically put out the press release and the information on social media, so he knew he couldn't... He, he wasn't going to be able to hide any longer. So he yep. brought himself in. Yep. I think that's fantastic. Good job. Chief, is the, the person who walked away from the fire camp, has he been captured? They have not. The CDC is, is actively working that. They have some leads. Um, so okay. they are. Yeah. He'll be next. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And Chief, I would just like to echo what the mayor said. Congratulations on getting all these guys into custody. Uh, you know, it's a testament to our police department. Uh, we go beyond, like the gentleman said earlier, uh, we have an outstanding police department. And I want you to know that it's recognized by the council, it's recognized by our community, and I hope it just kind of reverberates throughout the state of California, uh, the great job that, uh, that our police department is doing. So thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Stay out of Chino. Mm -hmm. Jeremy. Dave's out of town, huh? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Good evening. Uh, council, members of the public and staff, my name is Jeremy Alt, Deputy Chief with the Fire District. I do want to extend uh, regards from Chief Williams. Actually, presently, he's in Washington, D.C., as well as two members of our elected board, uh, Tom Howie and Mike Krieger. They're actually there representing the, the interests of the district and our community at the federal level. Um, we're excited about that opportunity that they may bring back from that, uh, kind of echoing the sentiments you said about being present, having relationship, and representing our interests at that level. 
Uh, second, we've had much conversation about the status of ambulances within the community. Uh, we're pleased that the county is hearing oral presentations for the, uh, their RFP for ambulance service this week. Uh, we're um, anticipating uh, excitedly the outcome of that, which we'll have more to report back after that occurs. And then finally, uh, we're in the process of actually uh, conducting a, what we call a captain's recruitment uh, as part of our leadership development and preparing our personnel to be leaders of the future. Uh, we're in the process of uh, a promotional exam to, to uh, promote uh, some of our captains uh, when we open our station 68 eventually as well as to replace uh, for some retirement. So we're in process of that right now and looking forward to the talent that comes forward to uh, serve our community. And finally, I just want to echo comments about our police partners on behalf of all of us. I mean, I have personal relationships with many um, in, our, in our community from the police department and the Chino Police Department is exceptional as well as their personnel to serve. So thank you so much. Jeremy, when do you think Station 68 is going to open? Um, we are still going through process of uh, planning and development. I think that we anticipate groundbreaking, don't quote me on this, towards the end of this year. I think that the, uh, again, don't quote me, I think they're looking at about a one-year build time. Um, but, of course, all of our plans are set in place to do what we can to improve that process and get things moving along. You know cities. I'm just I'm teasing. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're actively working hard to get that in place and, and get that up and running for the community. So, so it'll probably so. be 2025, sometime in 2025. I, I believe so. Don't, again, I, I apologize. I don't have the dates with me here tonight. But, uh, but yeah. And even though uh, Station 68 is in the city of Chino Hills, like we mentioned before, we're one fire district. So that also benefits the citizens of the Chino, uh, city of Chino as well, because that's part of our district and those resources are able to be shifted to serve the entire community as a whole, so. Well, I saw the, uh, the design concept. It's gonna be a beautiful station. Agreed, agreed. Lots of hard work by a great team. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Jeremy. You. And Jeremy, if I might, uh, before you leave, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, the mayor had talked with you and you were talking about the survival rates mm -hmm. Uh, that were associated with with your uh, uh, employees from the fire department. I believe it's 62 and a half percent, which is right. well above uh, our state and national levels. You guys are remarkable. You, the jobs that you do at the fire department, it's a testament to the dedication that you have uh, to, to the city of Chino and our citizens. So thank you very much. I appreciate that very much. I would love to take credit, but I will not personally take credit for the work of our folks. The, the people that work for the fire district are amazing. Uh, they've put in uh, incredible effort and time to train, 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 improve, 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 to be able to develop and provide that level of service. So again, I mentioned the members of the community that partner with us, but um, a lot of that effort, honestly, is from within our own people and, and the effort that they have put forth to seek to improve in those ways. So specifically, we're talking about folks that uh, suffer what we call sudden cardiac arrest, where their heart stops. Um, when I began my career years ago, we didn't see the same results we see now with technology and the things that we've learned and the efforts that our folks uh, put into place with how we deliver CPR, the efforts that we've put forth. Um, and really, our team is, is kind of leading the nation in our approach to that. Um, and that's really, we've, we've seen those results of not only are people restoring like their heartbeat, but these are folks that are actually walking out of the hospital in very, very similar or same condition that they were in before they ever experienced the event. And so those are just amazing results directly impacting members of our community, much of which comes from the work of our people, the support of our elected board, our staff as well, and obviously partners with the community and, and the city. So thank you so much. One of our neighbors actually went into cardiac arrest and Chino Valley Fire was there. And I can attest to everything that Jeremy's saying because every day now we see Ed and his wife Cindy walking. And so here was a man that, that I guess clinically was dead. Yeah. And yet because of his son's reaction, you guys, what you did, the hospital, everybody working together as a team. I mean, this man is alive, healthy, walking, um, he would have he would have not been able to live if it hadn't have been for what you guys do now. So right. my husband and I see him every day, every day walking. 
It's our pleasure it's to serve. And, and what Sonia Shaw had mentioned when she came up earlier too, the, the work that you did on her dad. Yeah. Uh, you guys do a phenomenal job. Uh, I just really appreciate the excellent service that you provide. So if you can thank everybody, I'd appreciate it. And I will absolutely do that from our firefighters to even the folks at our administration that help keep fuel in the engines and A to Z. So thank you so much. It's a team effort. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, with that, we are going to have to recess back into closed session, finish the item that we started discussing. So when we come back out, we will be adjourning to our next regular meeting that will be held on Tuesday, May 2nd, again at 6 o'clock. Uh, our time is changing with closed session no sooner than 4 p.m. So good evening. We will be back.